In Adobe InDesign, you can use lorem ipsum or dummy text to fill text boxes that have columns or no columns or text boxes in unique shapes so that you can get a sense for how much copy you'd need as a placeholder in your layout. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can use placeholder text in InDesign. Hello Creative! It's your Graphics Girl of GraphicsGirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here with a quick tip to help you design your brand. But first, would you like a free cheat sheet? Sir, yes sir! Head over to GraphicsGirl.com to download your free InDesign cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Just click the link below. Adobe InDesign is a layout program where you can combine text and images to form various layouts. Sometimes you know the size of your InDesign file that you're going to create, such as a six panel brochure. So you can begin designing while the copywriter or your client is still writing the copy that'll be used in your final layout. So sometimes what I'll do is use placeholder text just to slug in some copy so that I can continue designing. So to do that, you can create a text box. If you come over here to your type tool, you can click down and drag out to form a text box. You can see right up here that I have my blinking eye beam. That's where the text will begin, such as if I were to begin typing, it would go right there. I'll go ahead and select all with Command or Control A and hit delete. A better way than typing out some gibberish would be to use lorem ipsum copy. What is lorem ipsum? Well, lorem ipsum is dummy text. It has no meaning and it's based on Latin. It looks similar to real text, so it'll give you a sense of spacing as you use it as a placeholder. Because lorem ipsum is based on Latin, they sometimes call it greeked out text. Back in my InDesign file here, to insert some placeholder copy, you come up here to the type menu and choose fill with placeholder text. Voila, it completely filled your text box with Laura Mipson copy. You can see here that my text box could have three columns with a gutter or space in between those columns, but currently I just had it be one column. You can change that setting right up here after you have your entire text box selected with the black arrow or selection tool and coming to the number of columns icon at the top. You could change this number to three. Now, the placeholder text that you've already inserted will show you what it would look like in a three column layout. Placeholder text is really helpful for this. Similarly, if you wanted that copy to flow on to the other side, shown this in another tutorial, you could select that box right there on the bottom and continue to flow it into this column. Now see what happens here, it is linked but you're not seeing any placeholder text. So if you wanted to flow your placeholder text into your text box that you've linked, all you have to do is reflow some more placeholder copy. Here, I'll show you that if you right click your existing text box, you could modify it right here, fill with placeholder text. Now it will flow from the one right into the other. So you either have to have all of your text boxes in your layout and linked when you initially choose fill with placeholder text, or you can modify it as you link additional text boxes. So if you were designing an entire magazine or catalog, it could really help you lay out all the different pages with its images, maybe coupons and ads, and then get the editorial copy that you could flow in. You can even use placeholder text in text boxes that are not rectangular. 
in what's called the spread between these two text boxes, I'll go ahead and create an ellipse or circle. You can tell that I already have text wrap or a run around around the shape set. You can wrap around your text with this icon at the top. So now that you have an ellipse, you can use that ellipse to house your text. All you do is click inside that shape with your type tool. With your blinking eye beam there, you can go get your placeholder text one more time by coming to type, fill with placeholder text. And now this is looking really convoluted because it's the same font and point size as the body copy, but you could modify this in any way that you like. For example, if I select all within my passage here, I could change the font to be something more stylized and the point size, make it very large, 72 point. By the way, 72 point is equal to one inch. So, uh, lastly, I could change the type color to be white and I could use my black arrow or selection tool to select the overall shape and change the background to be a color. Lastly, maybe I'll take my type tool one more time here. Inside my shape once again, selecting all, I could change the paragraph alignment to be centered. So in this way, you can see what your layout could look like. You know, if you want to choose to reduce the point size or increase it, you could get the sense of what your layout would look like before you even have the actual final copy using placeholder text in Adobe InDesign. So if you found this video helpful, give it a like, yes. share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand. Thank you.